another episode of Winning with AI. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Tom Allen, the founder and CEO of the AI Journal. You also are the pledger, the founders pledger, uh, an advocate at the Tech London Advocates and Global Tech Advocates, uh, and you've worked in a lot of other AI associated businesses. There's quite a th- quite a few when I was going through, so I'll leave it as that. Is there anything else you want to add in there, Tom? No, man. Just uh, love being an AI enthusiast and having these kind of conversations with you, man. So looking forward to it. Yeah. No, cheers. And thanks a lot for coming on. I've, yeah, I was really excited to talk to you about it and, and pick your brain. Now, there's so many, because of what you do in such a broad sector of the AI world, there's so many routes we can go down. Like I said earlier, there's got a few things keen to ask you, but the first one is something that I've asked like, ev- everyone who comes on the, the podcast, which is... Mm-hmm. Quite a simple question, but it's how do you use AI in life, so just day to day, in in business as well to help you succeed? I guess. Yeah, I like that. It's a good, uh, very practical. So, I mean, everyone uses AI, as far as I'm aware. Like, if you're using your phone or using uh, Siri, I mean, that's a form of AI and learning what you're doing. But I mean, we use it for like content creation very openly. We don't use it to 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 publish anything but i'm always using it for ideas for getting over writer's block and for maybe giving me a thread of information to go do further research on and i think it's 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 really important to look at it that way but from a business perspective we're using a lot very transparently with automation at the moment so using power automate and using a lot of different tools to understand what is it in our processes we don't need to be doing and like there's one that i really like fireflies ai which you record meetings and it sends you a transcript and it sends you something that's something i'm i'm using at the moment but in my personal life man i've I've probably got a few more areas i want to really delve into i guess at times as i was mentioning great dude called chris runs a artificial inspiration and he was showing me different ways of like using it to create imagery and that got me thinking like not just for work but like like I was telling him, I was like, dude, I've got to buy one of these pictures off you. Like there's this cool one where they collabed with like Adidas and SpaceX and created like a future looking backpack. And then they've like created like art out of like Marvel characters and like Batman and Star Wars characters, all things I'm fond of. And like what I've shared earlier of on LinkedIn, like statues, historic statues and symbols, like doing their own selfies. Like it's, it's brilliant. Like, so those are probably the personal areas, but business areas, it's much more automation focused and much more i guess we're probably moving in that scale to to dashboard so everyone's got their own personalized dashboard and through that we can probably the next step would be to learn where where we need to improve and kind of put some analytics on it and see the spin so yeah it's exciting time and see exciting to see what kind of aspects we can learn from yeah yeah i think this there's a lot in there yeah, just sorry. just to go <laughs> no that's it's really good and interesting i think like you said in life i probably use it less in day-to-day life like mm. like you and then i should and i I like i actually i did so i did a trial <laughs> I didn't, i've not told anyone this who's going on the show yet but i did a trial where in life i i thought right i need a weekly shot and you know I, what i want to do is try to be as resourceful as i can with yeah all the ingredients that I buy so I can use like different ingredients across recipes. So actually I used the AI to generate a weekly list of meals like breakfast, lunch, and dinner mm. for a week. And then got to like trained it a few times to try and learn about what ingredients to get and make sure that I had no waste and stuff like that. It worked. I'd say it was pretty good. And yeah. I also, it gave me some meals and recipes that I've never really made before. So it's quite fun from that point of view, yeah. but it didn't, <laughs> when it says to make this, these are the ingredients you need. It kind of assumed you had some stuff just in the cupboards, which it didn't really tell you. So I was like, ah, <laughs> doesn't really. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So interesting, but things like that, I'm like, oh, I might try and do that more and just enjoy it a bit. But image generation, I, I saw you post with the, the selfies. It just made me laugh quite a lot. It was, it was good, but it's amazing how much that, form of AI has come on in the last, well, I mean, this year, really, last three months. So what are we, 28th of March? So yeah. I'd say in the last three months, it's it's changed massively since last year, even. So on that note, you obviously founder of AI Journey, you see a lot of different things happen in the AI sector across different segments and industries. For businesses who are like listening today, what do you think is the biggest trend or change in AI that's going to occur? or biggest innovation that's happening right now in terms of AI? Yes. 
I'm always, so the biggest trend I'm seeing is that people are starting to implement similar to yourself, like with imagery or content creation or actually using it and actually getting prompted to use it a bit more. And I think that's going to, especially if Apple do this release, which it looks like they're going to do at their next conference in June to integrate AI, I think through maybe Google through Gemini, which seems to be the way, but to the trend that businesses are using, I think people are just generally applying it a bit more and trying to really suss out and put it into their spending plans, into their, into their, whether that's financial year budgets or, or department budgets, depending on the size of the company. And a lot of startups are just using it at much quicker pace because the tools are out there. I mean, you can use Rundown AI. It's a brilliant newsletter. I think they've got like half a million subscribers and it's free. And then if you go on their website on Rundown AI, they've got a, the guy on LinkedIn is always publishing really cool stuff as well. And I think he's, they've got like a library dashboard of all these different tools you can use. So I think there's a lot of education around what's being used and what the use cases are and i think you're seeing it from like crms like salesforce have done a big push with like einstein and at their conferences to show how it can be put into your workflows or follow-ups or whatever it might be and uh, you're seeing it with like optimizely i saw a lot that they're doing with all these different kind of areas and i think it's going to be just a it's a real implementation time. And I think there's going to be a lot of lessons last year was kind of like, Oh, this is kind of cool, but we haven't properly assessed for it. And I think it might change again when the whole EU AI act gets confirmed. I don't know. Like it doesn't seem to be getting as many eyeballs as it probably should be because someone was explaining to me how it's more of a global act, because if any data that's passing through a data center in Europe and it's abiding by those laws, they're going to have to, I don't know the ins and outs. I don't want to give any misinformation, but there's something there that's going to impact the trend for the rest of tw- for the next 12, 18 months, I think, Josh, because it's, but yeah, I, I just, there's a lot of companies implementing at the moment and a lot of mm-hmm. people wondering where to go to get that information. And I mean, personally, I just think go, go take the time to learn about it. Like it's not hidden information Like you can find stuff out about it and just really probably need to schedule it into your work day, whether that's an eight till nine o'clock reading session or it's a review of, I don't know, however you're structuring it in your business. Yeah. Yeah. Think that aspect, you can't just hire someone expecting to know about it because it really is a hands-on learning thing at the moment. And I think the companies that are trialing it and doing very small scale implementations in test environments are going to, are going to see a lot of success because you can do things. They all sounds very complicated and big projects. Like you can start with a very simple automation, just sending an email to a certain folder and then getting a weekly summary of that email. Like it doesn't have to be big, big scale, but you can learn from like a grassroots yes. or build people their own dashboards so they can understand like what those numbers are specific to them. So it's, but yeah, the year of implementation, I think this is. That's, that's a good one. It's interesting. I think, the, t- the testing point that you made, I think that's massive and education yeah. as well. So I'll start on the education one because I think education in terms of understanding what's happening with AI in the world, I think it's going to be really important. And I'd say probably more important to also like keeping yourself educated because it's moving so quickly. And, you know, we talked about like what GPT-3 was like the start of last year and yeah. now we're on four and the differences in capability of five <laughs> six yeah. and the next few yeah. weeks and you've got multimodal coming in and so it's going to be it's going to be a shift and just at least going to have to stay educated in terms of where to go obviously you release a lot of reports and information as well but where do you think how do you think people are, can educate themselves best because i think there's no free resource out there or, or information out there that they can digest yeah so I, I always like, I mean, look, I got into this because I didn't under I just saw this when I was working at an engineering company and I just thought, shit, this is going to be massive. Like you can just see the kind of implementation. And I saw like machine vision being used at like a Hermes depot and like, uh, I didn't see it in person, but we had like a use case, which I saw from afar. So I saw it through videos and when the engineers came back and one was through biscuits, like seeing Stabley robots, just packaged goods. Another one was filling Coca-Cola bottles and beer bottles. So like doing dozens of bottles within seconds and then palletizing them and just racking them up. And it was using a lot of like, not basic, like it's all complicated stuff, but like computer vision and like predictive analytics. So like mainly focusing on machine. like food and how to do yeah. like, very machine focused and like how to use robots and like we use things for for car doors and how to use 3d printing to, to it was really innovative actually for quite a 
for an SME manufacturing company. But where I'm going with it is like I just read a lot, man. Like and like even now. So this here, this is one of the books I want to get through. So Bernard Mars' new generative name. I got this the other day and got sent it by Wiley, thanks to Wiley, and got sent this to like look through. And I mean, I've got another dozen more and then God knows how many on my Kindle. But it's it's a real big thing, just like you were mentioning it, right? And I'd love to know what your approach is, but just taking the time to go speak to people and have those conversations, ask not dumb questions, just curious questions, like generally finding out. And I think I think people... It, it's really you can't expect someone to turn up and know what to do with this stuff like even cios and ctos and chief data officers the ones that get the most respect it's like if you look at someone as controversial as elon musk or steve job or maybe not mm-hmm. steve Jobs, musk or jeff bezos or bill ackman or whoever it is they are constantly just hammering questions to try and understand like how does that work or what does this do or like the new uh, ceo of aw of amazon who's they used to be the CEO of AWS. And they're just constantly curious. And I think anyone can have that skill. Go read, go watch YouTube videos. There's plenty of videos on there. Yeah. And just strike up conversations with people. Like generally, just just find someone of interest. And like I'm reading at the moment, Masters of Scale by Reid Hoffman. The amount of name dropping he does in there. So I just go onto LinkedIn, start connecting with him. And I think like chances and probability and just strike up a conversation. Like you don't know where it'll lead to. Like it's um yeah, it's a lot you can do, man. Yeah, um, I completely agree. So in terms of how I'd approach it, I think reading. So personally, I've got, I've got personal interest in it as well. Like mm. you, you kind of, you see something and then start picking it apart. For me, it was probably back in, God, it might be like 2015 or 16, I think, was I was at an event by Microsoft at the XL. And there was a guy talking about quantum computing. Yeah. Uh, he was a Dutch, Dutch scientist. And he just explained it in the most simple way of that the difference between computing these days and computing a quantum computer is you've got a maze. You can have the fastest computer in the world. It'll try every route until it finds the right route to get to the middle. Yes. He said, but that's, that's as fast as it goes. He's like, a quantum computer will go down every route at the same time to get to the middle. And that's yeah. the difference with the speed. I was like, and just something simple. I don't know, clicked it. So I went down the route of quantum computing and then thought, crap, what can... <laughs> What can what's AI yeah. going to do with that? So then, yeah, dug into AI, and then, like you said, meeting people. I, I completely agree with that. I think business. So some of the bigger enterprise businesses I've talked to recently, one of the things that came up a lot for them was the kind of concern around safety and implementing it and data security and privacy. When I mean safety as well, not like it's going to attack you, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, rightfully so, you don't want to just jump into it and leak a load of data like i know there's some issues that people had but it's pretty set like a lot of companies that whichever company you're going for for whatever problem you're trying to solve but there is safety around that now i just go out and meet people a lot of the time and i think what you said there which was really interesting is you just you've been reading books and you find find those influences and you follow them on linkedin and try and connect with them and talk to them and Anyone who loves AI, I feel like, is happy to talk about AI at the moment because because it's changing yeah. so much. It's nice to get different opinions on it. I just want to put back to a point on in like the year of implementation or like integration. You obviously speak with a lot of leaders within the space who are and, and organisations who are wanting to do AI reports and things like that. Well, How are you finding their approach to to implementation at the moment? Do you think there's a and what what type of AI you're implementing as well? Because one, I don't know about you, but I have a lot of conversations and AI 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 defaults to Gen AI, and that's that's constant. Where yeah, we're predictive AI or, or tabular AI, slightly different. We go on numbers. We're promptless. That's one of the ways I like to describe it. So it just gives you the answer, tells you why. Generative AI is different. What are you finding the kind of markets like at the moment? Yeah, it's. I want to say something quickly to your great point as well about making things clear and it's relative to your AI and Gen AI point as well. Like, you know, Brian Cox? Uh, yeah, so I love he's him. Really, <laughs> he's not necessarily... I went to go see him live. So awesome. Um, was, like, yeah, he was in an event recently, actually. Yeah. Have you seen him live? I was ill. That's the oh, one I was ill for. I know. Like, it's the, so he was at an event. Yeah. Showed up live at the event, had the ticket, ready to go. Tonsillitis just absolutely died so yeah i'm still good about that it was only a few weeks ago so <laughs> oh, man. i know but it's um 
he's really good live, but quickly to your point, he explains like quantum computing, not quantum computing, like quantum theory, I think. There's a video of it, and I think, and he does like big questions answer. He does these shorts where he answers them very quickly. And like to me, it's just amazing how he can break down such a complex theory very quickly. And I feel, to your point, that's what we need to be doing for customers and for businesses in this world because there is a lot of noise when I don't think it needs to be as complicated as it is. Now, to your second point, I'd love to know where you're thinking of this as well, man. But it's, I think the companies that are very forward and say, like, look, we don't know, we can't, there's not a one box solution for you. And I think that's really important in today's world. And I think people that are going, it's like, I always say the thing, like if you're sat at a pub and you've got two people to pick from or wherever you are, like I just use a pub as an example and you're having a pint with them and the person, one person is relaying with you, asking you questions, is curious about certain things and you're curious about what they know. Or you've got someone that just knows everything and is me, 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 and talks about everything. I know which one I'm going to pick to spend more time with, the one that's more curious. And I think it's very important that businesses take that kind of approach. I think the ones that are succeeding and the ones that are generally taking that curious approach and saying, like, look, we don't know the ins and outs either, but we do know how a platform or how a solution can help you. And we really want to be on a kind of, I don't know, not grassroots level, but a kind of uh experience with you to understand i don't know what the right word is journey experience path whatever you might call it to understand yeah. what they're doing but it's and i think you you get to you get a much faster build or implementation that way that works for what you specifically need there's going to be businesses out there like i can't ever see a business replacing a hamburger like i'm always going to want to stop by mcdonald's and get a big mac or a double quarter pound or six, like 20 chicken nuggets whatever it might be like the, you can obviously in that process automate parts and like there was an example of google glass doing it but there's certain things like you're just not gonna have that need and it, it's the point i'm making josh is similar to businesses not always needing these fancy tools i'm not saying they don't need them they might not be at that stage yet. Like yeah. the ones that can really work them to be like, let's work with what you've got at the moment. I'm actually just going to trust them a lot more. Like it's thinking you're really up on my side here. And I think that's really important for, for implementation and for, for general curiousness is probably what I'd have. And I, I don't think there's a, I don't know. I don't think there's a one box fits all at the moment. I think businesses that are trying to do that are really, they're just getting a lot of backlash because they just, see and it's not going to work like it businesses are changing so quick yeah no yeah i completely agree with that i think the i think there was a period of consolidation of a lot of SaaS companies and i think we're probably seeing the same in the ai to a degree as well where yeah some companies are starting to purchase more the problem yeah i think there's, there's a problem you get there which you've, you've touched upon which is actually it comes so big so he's the solution for a start either it's way too expensive because, yeah. well, you can buy the basic version, but actually what you want to do is in this chunk of it where you've got to buy the Elite Pro Plus version, which is, you know, absolute fortune. Yeah. And it gets really complex. And actually, you then can't really speak to a, a real person. You might have yeah. people who talk to you and, and kind of look after you, but the reality is they're probably just trying to want to upsell. It's, it's interesting because two of our customers who we've worked with the longest, we went in and we're obviously you know, smaller business than large enterprise and things like that. But we'd kind of sat with them and took them on a journey, an AI journey, which has been helpful for us from a learning point of view. So an education is a business and what we need to do. And actually it's helped develop our, our product roadmap to test things and benefit. They get the benefit of the new features and things. We get the benefit of trying it out with them. So it's become almost like a, a true partnership. And I think that's where we have the most success because we've also yeah. got things like like in prediction, a prediction engine where you can put any data into it and it will predict out the other side. It'll see any trends and it'll, it'll give you answers out the back of it. And using that, it's been really interesting to see what some customers have done with that. And But you wouldn't normally go out and purchase that, if you know what I mean. So it's about that partnership and build a relationship up with them. One one other thing, slightly separate to, I think the AI journal, probably relevant as well, but... I noticed that you do some work with the Founders Pledge as well, and also the Tech London Advocates as well. What's kind of motivated you to do join that side of things as well? 
Yeah, well, it's, I don't do much with them. Uh, the Founders Pledge is kind of just what we do with our it's a scheme we're trying to build. I don't know whether the 111 model, similar to Salesforce's model, is something we're going to follow, uh, which is a great model. It's like 1% of employees' time, 1% of equity, and 1% of profits go towards like charitable and not for profit and good causes, so I, or however you word it. And like, look at look at Salesforce. Like they're pioneers of SaaS, and they created SaaS. Like before, you had very hardware on site. You had to get. It was a nightmare. And you think they really expanded because they could service. To your point about those customers you mentioned, Josh, it's brilliant. Cloud apps are doing that because that's how Salesforce are the titans they are. Because they realized through their model they could service to big enterprises, but also they can service to small businesses. That you know, if you go to a Michelin star restaurant, that Michelin star restaurant is going to have a limit on how many people it can serve and that's why it's yeah. going to be compared to an amazon or a, a big thing but it still doesn't mean it, it, it's a very unique company but yeah I, I think that's the important point i keep making great points but uh, it's it's just the way of thinking i like my goal with this is to really just inform people i guess like to, to help people and that's what i kind of want to do and build and i mean i don't know if i'll have this company forever i don't really see having it but it's the key thing when i was going into it was literally just as a blog while i was doing it in the background was just thinking like how to how to help people like how to and i'll always do more of that stuff like uh, there was one with like microsoft for startups or something i think of someone that we got like all those kind of things i always yeah, yeah. Uh, help with and i think it's really important for companies to do that because it's like to what is it the writings of jeff bezos and walter isaacson's book it's like all the annual report and he talks about this model of missionaries and mercenaries and the people that are mercenaries it's much rarer to find ones and the, the like have they it was like nine times out of ten we don't buy mercenary businesses nine times out of yeah. ten we buy missionary businesses because the missionary businesses nine times out of ten they always seem to make more money because they've got a much better goal a much bigger vision but more important than that they seem to give more and actually drive toward the goal where the team are, are getting up at you know seven in the morning to work hard on the graft and pull the long days because they can see the impact it's happening and i think that's a real that is something that personally attracts me to a company to see if they're and i think it's very easy to see and more than that just yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even know if I'm making sense, but that's... It, no, it does. Yeah, completely. It's got me thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really important because it's... I think the, the mission... Yeah, I'm going to have to read... I've not actually read Bezos's book, so I'll have to have a, a read of that. Yeah. Re read quite a few of the ones you mentioned. Like, oh, yeah. But it, it makes sense. And I think similar to what you're talking about, the AI journal, how you founded it, clearly is from something you're interested in. And usually that's got the most pull, which is why you see businesses perform better because it's actually, you're interested in it and you want to help. So it's not like you, you're going to work every day and thinking, oh, I've got to go and do my nine to five job. It's, it's something you're generally passionate about, which is quite yeah. nice because I feel like I've, I've met a lot of people who have talked with as well, have done a show, but in this kind of area at the moment who it's such an exciting area, I think, to be in. So yeah. a, a lot of people seem really passionate about it. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is there any, I guess you, there's Gen AI, as we mentioned, and there's, there's Tableau and stuff. I don't think we need to go into the back end. I know there's differences, mm -hmm. but is there any kind of particular areas or trends that you think in the next six months a business should look at? And, and by that, I mean, if they're adopting like a, a Gen AI or a predictive AI, mm. do you think anything's going to change in the next six months? So rather than what they should do to adopt it, but what's going to come yeah. on the horizon? really good point i think there's going to be or it seems there's going to be a lot of change that way we can't even envision at the moment and picture i think with the short well it seems soon to be released gpt5 i don't know when it's coming but or is it gpt4 that's coming and to show a gpt5 and to show what that's going to be able to do and how it's going to help and like what well, anthropic all these large language models which are the big enablers of gen ai but i i really don't know how people are going to respond to what happens and i think you're going to see a big shift in the companies that are getting ahead and, and pushing ahead and i think that's what a part of microsoft's attempt well it seems to me like uh, that picture i don't know that was with imad from inflection ai and like they seem I, i've said in my linkedin post i don't know whether they're building like a, a an avengers style 
AI task force or a mafia style uh, Goodfellas family. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it, it's really interesting. And I think there's a lot of new developments every week that businesses are just naturally going to be changing. And I, to your point, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm really, it's something I'm curious about myself because I'm thinking, how are these business models going to change and how are you going to impact things? Like, that, that reason, I don't know whether I'm a fan of it or not. I, I, I don't, think it's a bad thing but that whole thing with Klarna showing how that AI chatbot's done the work of 700 support staff or customer service staff it's the reason I liked it I'm not saying I like the application but I think it's inevitable those things are going to happen and I think the end the customer is going to be the main benefiter because they're going to get queries yeah. faster people are going to move to hired uh, like jobs are going to be replaced but re- i was saying this on another podcast for being replaced with a better and i think there's this misconception you instantly link it to being bad when mm-hmm. anything that we use today like how we're conducting this podcast look at look at how many businesses the mobile phone created through zynga through mobile apps it, it created a whole new economy and like i think it's going to be very similar with what we're seeing you're already seeing it with plugins and chat gpt plugins i I think that's a, the whole communication and, and messaging that's being sent is just wrong and it's how people are perceiving it, Josh. But I think it's, I, I really wonder how people are differentiating between AI and Gen AI. I see AI being more like a predictive analytics engine and more like a understanding of where your business is and being able to help with doing things that are very based off your data that you already currently have so if you've got large databases or big data and you're putting it into aws or you're putting it into a, a server or whatever it might be or how much you're hosting on famous excel and you you need to make learnings from that ai is great gen ai is more kind of and i think the next wave of gen ai is very soon coming where gen ai prompts you josh not you're prompting it and i think yeah. when that comes it's gonna come like it, i don't know when but that is probably i don't think far off the next releases of large language models and i think that's what's going to be partly within it and you can imagine when that starts going and i look at look at how to me i don't i'll I'll end my rant here and see what you think but you look at things like vision like the vision pro and the Mm -hmm. meta sunglasses yeah i I really want a pair and i tried some on when i was in london the other week and i was like shit i need to get some of these and just the the updates coming to them top powered with gen ai being able to feed that information like the demo mark zuckerberg showed that is is show like being able to look at like the art the triumph and get all the history on it or look at a menu and automatically translate that is gen ai ai itself in the business looking at what data you've got like the classic argument if you haven't got any data you can't run ai gen ai is is much more different in the way it prompts you and you pro and or you prompt it and then eventually it will prompt you to get responses i think those kind of things I honestly think Meta is really getting ahead of the ball because they've come out with something that already has adoption, right? Like I'm already very familiar yeah. with Ray Bans, and it did. It, it's incredible, like what that's going to do for for so that for businesses in six months, especially in retail and and like direct to consumer. It's going to be a game changer. If I've got my Meta sunglasses, yeah. I can look at a room and say, that's where a chair is going to go. That's where a sofa is going to go. That's where my TV is going to go from Ikea. And I'm just looking through here and I've got it connected through some smart ring. I was saying this as well. I reckon smart rings and phones and watches, yeah. like, you're not going to need a mobile. I, I generally, I mean, you will. I, that's not dying anytime soon. But the 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 need for them is going to be a lot less or the the requests for them is going to be a lot less. So I think if businesses think about it that way, I think they'll, they'll look at their business models differently. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. What do you think? Like how, how that, that's going to change it? It's crazy. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of crazy innovations. I think back to your point about, I'd say the fear almost of, of AI is driving a certain narrative of it because of a lack of understanding. And yeah. if people actually go out and educate themselves, I don't think people would be as worried. Mm-hmm. There will be job losses, like any major shift in any industry, like industry. I look at the manufacturing industry going through the industrial revolution 4.0, and it's like, well, of course, that's going to automate jobs. But like you said, that'll create people who need to manage it and maintain the software and maintain the the hardware that's probably going to replace people who are actually on the floor so there's a level of educational upskill i guess in the country which is positive yeah. i mean there's an argument for accessibility to that and who can do that and then you know does it 
increase the divide of of wealth and things like that. But that's a slightly different one. <laughs> we won't go into that today. I think the thing is, it's not all all doom and gloom. I think people are going to need to to educate themselves on it to understand more. But yeah, there's also the you talked a bit about the kind of like chatbots and automation of customer service. I feel like people as well think, oh God, more chatbots and I'm going to have to deal with that and not speak to a human. I really want to speak to a human. But again, I think it's probably based on the conception of or the preconception that it's a chatbot that you've spoke to 10 years ago, which were very much, here's a list of questions. If you don't fit whichever route you go down, that kind of traditional routing method, mm. then you're not going to get an answer that you want really. So it's it's going to change because true AI driven chatbots will be able to answer questions in the human language. So that's, you know, and they already are. So yeah. that's fine. So it's good. I think there's a lot of positives around it. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, wearable tech and everything is a huge one. I actually looked at buying some of those glasses as well myself. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That yeah. did. It. Still might now. I feel like if you're pushing me over to actually buying them, but I'm like, oh, yeah, love that. Love the app. We can uh, yeah. review them together and see like what we both think and what what ideas we come up with. Fucking yeah, cool. and then next time we meet, we can record each other's answers with each other's glass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, have you seen the uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Lex Freeman one where they do it in the metaverse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I mean, that's come on loads as well but i do feel like with tech like that as well we're coming at that adoption curve where the product is now developed enough to be usable to the average user and actually have a benefit to them not someone like me who usually buys something really early on and i'm determined yeah. to make it work but you've got to go do a load of work around to get that but yeah, yeah it'd be interesting and i mean you I talk about talk about AI advancements. I don't know if you've seen the obviously the Nvidia. Is it is it? I want to say Groot, but I feel like it wasn't Groot. Yeah, is it Groot? Groot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. It's, uh, yeah. Griffith, yeah, the Blackwell after the famous mathematician. Like, there's that company is honestly insane. Like, it, what they've done is 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 mad. Like, to be to be the number one AI hardware company is how I see them. I'm saying that is their tagline. But that's how I see them. It's it's mad. Like, it's crazy that growth. Yeah, and it's been that's accelerated over the last like few years. Really, they've really accelerated in terms of what they delivered. Yeah, like the yeah. You've got inside of Black Blackwell, like we did our newsletter on it. It's mad. It, it's like uh, what their their growth rate of compute power within the Blackwells is on like a, a thousand percent return or something, like year after year. And I think it's something daft like that. And you think how much they've got within just these small black chips. They said they're selling them for this like small black chip will set you back, what was it, twenty to thirty thousand dollars per one? And to create it, they did R and D of about ten billion dollars to create it. And it just shows you that's how valuable it is. And I think if you fact check me on this, Mark Zuckerberg recently just confirmed they're buying like another three hundred and fifty thousand is it X one hundreds or I don't know which one they're buying and check the story yourself but there's yeah. something that's buying to just show what meta's doing and that's why i honestly think they are like i know like xai for their large language model through elon and i know he credits jensen a lot for what he's built but just the science and, and the application like people like forget how much data that microsoft is sat on with their email threads with outlook like it's not like that alongside gmail but i think outlook's mad and google as well google have sat on like all that search result data like how many billions of searches are made a day like they are sat on just ridiculously like mind-blowing heads of data but then you look at it from what's more valuable you're looking at it from xai they've got all the data of the cars of the teslas they've got all the data from space air spacex going up into space and doing those yeah. missions They've got all the data from Twitter, so all from X. Like, and you think X is going to turn in? I don't know, like what it will do for that large, long, large language model is insane. Like being able to process financial transactions, being able to book holidays, being able to take calls, video calls, now hosting. Like, you think all that data is being captured, put into a large language model to give back to people? It, it blows my mind. Like, it's it's it's, it's not sure. Yeah, I think the potential is clearly there for businesses yeah. <laughs> as well to yeah. use it i mean but, but i can't think back to one of the first points education it's like you're going to have to continuously stay up to date with what's happening 
to stay mm. on top of the trends. Having said that, and it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on this, probably is a final question, conscious time, but do you do you see, I guess, companies at the moment building out strategies around AI, or do you see them building looking to implement AI to help another strategy, if you know what I mean? So is this standalone AI strategy building? Because so that I'll give you a bit of context. The reason I brought it up is I've had a lot of conversations in full transparency. I've been pushing like actually what you need to do is look at the purpose of your business, how are you going to grow, yeah. how are you going to cool. work, mm. and then look at how AI can help that and like map certain processes out. But I've, I've had a lot of conversations with enterprise businesses who've almost got AI as a, a checkbox as the, to their activity for their KPI or what have you have OKR. So they're looking at an AI strategy and, and and I don't know which is the right answer. I think it's pros and cons of both, but yeah, just interested to get your thoughts on it. Well, I probably, I, I do definitely steer the same way you're looking at it, Josh, from an aspect of it. I think people are forgetting, like without a customer, you don't have a business. Like it, unless you're like a unique bot- model, or like you're a research institute or something. And I mean, there's a few more examples than that, but my point is the businesses that survive off kind of theory and research are a lot less than the ones that actually provide a product to the end customer. Like a Coca-Cola, you can see exactly what you're buying. Like you know how people are engaging with it, you know how people are using it, yeah. drinking it. Like Lego, you, you build it or whatever it might be, like all these different businesses. And I, I think, to your point, people that are building AI-specific strategies are going to, not all the time, I think there's, there's a time and place for it, depending on your business model, but a, a large amount, I don't know what the data is, so this is a guess, but I'd imagine they're probably not going to be as successful because you're you're probably chasing something that's not aligned with what your customers want to be buying or want to be doing. Like the reason these companies are so valuable and that are making so much money is because they're providing value. Like that's if you're not providing value and you're not helping someone, you're probably <laughs> not going to be in business very long. Like if you're not solving a problem, it's it's a really simple equation like to to run a business and to 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 get things going. And I think those businesses that are steering towards saying they need to do AI with no set plan or set outcome, which I don't think is actually as many as people are making out. I think it's a lot of, like, people are pretty smart and people that run businesses or run departments are pretty switched on to know, like, if we're doing yeah, it, yeah, yeah. for it, it's like they just wouldn't go spend massive budgets without the return. Like, even billion pound businesses, they don't spend on marketing unless they can see the numbers and see the results or on google ads or on functions or events like they track everything and that's why they're successful because they 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 can they can measure that risk or measure their, yeah. their spend. and i think businesses are doing that 100 percent with ai but i think i i think companies are maybe focusing on what can i do next they're not too sure and that goes back to our great point earlier being aligned with them on that discovery path like look what is it can you do mm-hmm. like can you envision that five-year path of what you can give to a customer down the line? Like what, what can you do better to be better accuracy with their revenues? Maybe not just, and then get more granular than that, like by department or by, by the people that spend most or by the demographics or by the things or whatever it looks like or where people are buying from or what they're doing. It can, or what models or what's going to be the trend in a year's time. I think all those things are, are really important and mm-hmm. And without going off your great question, I, I I honestly think businesses just need to be in it for how can I help? How can I like back to our point, missionary and, and mercenary? Like how can yeah. I be mission driven to, to help people? Because if you help people, people don't have a problem coming to spend that money with you. Like they just if if they can see that you're going to help them and you can help them time and time and time again, you're gonna, you're naturally going to have knock on effects for having a successful company. And I think I think businesses that maybe. Yeah, I, I think more businesses than we think are trying to think about what the outcome is, but they yeah. just don't know what the spend should be, what platform they should use, which is the question we get a lot at the moment, and how to build those relationships. And I mean, that goes full circle with our education piece, actually going to com- – like people ask me, how do you know that? I'm like, well, I went to this conference, I went to that, I joined that webinar, and I joined this. And they're like, oh, well, of course you're going to know it. Or of course, not you're going to know it, but you're going to have an idea of what's going on because it's yeah. like I've been waking up every morning saying, what can I go learn today to take to conversations like this or to take to our customers to say, this is 
probably what your action plan should be or or you need to consider these factors we're never going to tell a company what to do because they're already doing what they're successful at but it's like these are the factors you probably need to consider and this is our audience telling us that. It, it's yeah. a really nice model that's yeah i think it's a great answer to it and uh, probably on the simplification we had uh, praveen nara on, on the show and he was talking about it and he described it ai is electricity and i said yeah. oh he said it's like the next next electricity basically it can power anything but you know you power i'm powering this computer right now yet downstairs like it's powering the kettle or the washing machine yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's doing different things so it's like all the fish tank <laughs> and actually the, the ai is the electricity and it's the smart piece but there's so many outputs that you're going to be able to do with it and people can build on top of it. And it might, some of it might be like you look at some of the Gen AI platforms at the moment is built on GPT or maybe open AI's mm. methods, but actually you're building different things for different solutions. And I think for me, it's that what's your purpose, what are you trying to solve, what's your problems and then get the right, right software or AI solution that f- fits that problem rather than trying to, I think, yeah, it comes back to, partnering someone to do that i think that's really important yeah, yeah. It is. It's, a, it's a really important point and that's why i saw like how consultancies uh, and like management consultants are, are, are struggling like i don't know not str- i mean that's a headline i don't know if they are actually struggling i mean they're very robust businesses but that people are starting to maybe look at like where am I going with this? Like ways to properly use certain technologies and where you've got someone telling you you need to strip out your middle management when really this might not be what you need to do. And I think there's a lot more opportunities to learn where you can use this to not necessarily... And I think there was a study, and I, I want to look this up, but there's a study which shows like people that often reduce headcount and reduce workforce end up losing in the long run. Now, I get it at times that people need to make layoffs and yeah. happens because of a market demand or whatever, but it's it's something like uh, like Apple were really, they were like one of the last ones to let people go, I think, and it wasn't until their car development or maybe just slightly before that, but they were one of the ones like when all those tech companies were making layoffs at what, beginning of 2023, was it? Or yeah, yeah. End of 2022, because the demand from COVID had started recovering and people going to or whatever the factors were. And I think, like it, it shows how they were very smart in hiring and it's not necessarily saying you don't need to hire me but you need to understand like how to get the maximum use out of your or not use like the maximum i don't know the word creativity or or actions or like efficiency whatever word you want to use yeah or, but i mean there's loads of topics that that and to your point earlier to your trend earlier josh like it, it scares the living hell out of me with with like what's going to happen with data centers and compute power because there's not there's not enough. Like it, it, it's really worrying. Like you think, like what happens when we can't produce enough electricity to keep things going, and like what happens when you shut off electricity? And you saw it with like Houston, I think, at the end of 2022, I think, in Houston, where they had like a massive freeze over the pipes, and the the cities shut down because they weren't used to it, and it was like this is going to cause all sorts of damage. It's like people say, global freezing is much more dangerous than global warming because freezing is literally an ice age like i don't know how accurate that is but you can understand the reason the rationale for the argument yeah yeah it's it, honestly computing power and data centers and the mate, amount they consume that's what not ai scares me that scares me because you just think those are like a different beast and without them we're not going to be having these sort of conversations or being able to do what we do on our computers like it's a, it's a mad conversation quite a daunting one as well but i mean yeah yeah i mean hopefully we'll have like a super agi which will just be able to solve that for us by then so uh, <laughs> yeah. but then we won't be able to power it exactly exactly it's, uh, yeah it's a, it's a wild wild man like i it's it, i love it i love it it's so much fun it is and it's constantly changing and i think some people like that some people don't i think obviously you, you that's why you're in it <laughs> but yeah it's really interesting uh just I think before we wrap up, obviously people should go check out the AI journal. Do you want to give people a bit of advice if they haven't heard of it? I mean, I know a lot of people who do and a lot of people who follow, <laughs> follow me on LinkedIn or connected with on LinkedIn do. So, but I think, you know, let them know about it because it's a really good, I'm not being biased here, but it's a really good uh, place to go find out your information on on everything, everything AI. Hey Josh, yeah. Visit us AI journal, man. It's, it's a great story that we've got and a great, or a great story we're creating for people to really 
the evangelize people to get involved in the conversations and to really have that curiosity because it really pisses me off when people don't want to let other people into the conversation and i think this is a conversation everyone should be having like regardless of your level of expertise and i think yeah just trying to be a platform where where that can where that can or on having those channels where those conversations can thrive so yeah biggest platform is on linkedin and the website and soon going to be starting to push out a lot more through x and youtube and obviously you can find us at a lot of conferences we're always at conferences speaking to people and on stage talking about these kind of topics so yeah we'd love to always connect with people and see their story brilliant well thanks so much for coming on there's probably a lot more questions i'm looking that i could still ask but we'll wrap it up there yeah, we'll yeah. do another one and we'll see like in a few months' time if our predictions are completely wrong or <laughs> if they're right. <laughs> so actually it's it's something totally different. It's pub AI. That's that's where it's at. <laughs> but yeah, cheers, Tom. Thanks a lot for, for coming on the show. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on, Josh, and uh, keep up the great work with it. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Winning with AI. We hope to catch you every single Thursday on your favorite podcast channels on YouTube and the cloudapps.com slash podcast website now please like follow subscribe and we'll see you next week thank you